film whose script was completed in 2009 by THE Master of Horror, wrapping production in 2013 with, with a distribution so tangled you'd thought it was found in a cistern under Derry, finally released to a quiet and lackluster debut in 2016. I'm Matt Dewis, and I'm bringing Cell to the table. So, as I mentioned before, uh, this series' theme is works adapted by the master of horror, Stephen King. Uh, my co-hosts, Randy Kirk. Hey, everybody. And Steve Fraser. Hey, hey. Why had you never seen this film until this series? Uh, but before we get into that, Steve Fraser. Oh, oh, well, okay. I also have not seen, well, Randy and I both have not seen this movie. Right. I, um, I just thought we'd throw out a little disclaimer yep. uh, before we start this, that... Um, despite the fact that all three of these films are based on novels, the point of this is to discuss the film and not have it be a comparison piece. You know, we don't we don't necessarily want it to be film and novel class. Uh, although we will probably make references to the books if we've read them, but just kind of wanted a caveat that we're really trying to hone in on the movie versions. But Cell was one that I missed. Randy, you missed it too, right? I did miss it. Any particular reason? Well. Wait, which? Oh, well, go ahead. I was gonna say we need preconceived notions, but maybe you can include right, that. Right, right, right. I so, think I will. Yeah, I, I didn't hold on, really. One second, uh, just uh, sponsor, non-sponsor. Uh, <laughs> you first, here. and I'll go. Oh yeah. Thank you, Hams. Ah, so, I didn't really have a good reason for missing this one. I, it looked kind of corny. It looked like some things that we had definitely seen before the uh, zombie invasion, or you know, whatever uh, you know disease or whatever you want to throw on that <laughs> make them <laughs> disease angry. Yeah. Um, but it looked a little corny but it you know it looked like your pretty generic run of the mill action horror movie I love Cusack I love Sammy J so I knew I'd get around to it eventually it just uh, surprised it took me longer than I expected as far as my preconceived interestingly enough I, I were all three very big fans of Stephen King We've all read many of the novels. Yeah. Um, I own almost all of the novels. I own Cell, but I never read it, shockingly. It came out in the, the late aughts, yeah. I think 09-ish. And, uh, <clears throat> 06. It, was it that early? That was it was a, before Duma Key? Yes. That's crazy to me. Which makes sense, because that was the last... Duma Key was the last one I had read. The, for a so the, the only reason I bring this up um, is because uh, Cell was... The book I came back to. Oh, so Dreamcatcher. That was mine. After Dreamcatcher, I I was like, mm, I don't know. wait, Dreamcatcher the movie? No, Dreamcatcher the, the book. Oh, right. So two thousand one, two thousand two, Dreamcatcher comes out, and I'm like, this isn't my favorite. So you know, there's not going to be a new Dark Tower because that's where I am. I'm I'm Dark Tower. Right. Well, so as we know from the Adam Sandler series, if somebody uh, does you wrong one time, you're going to take a break. <laughs> well, yeah, just a little bit. So, oh, excuse me. Um, so, so I took a break from reading King, and uh, my brother's like, "Hey, you know, there's this new one. It's kind of, it's kind of zombie-ish. You should give it a read." And I was like, mm, "Okay," but I didn't like Dreamcatcher. He's like, "No, no, no." Give Cell a look. Wait, so, <clears throat> so he recommended Cell because you didn't like Dreamcatcher? Yeah. That's crazy to me. Right. So, yeah, it, it was that, the, the, just that time, that 2006, right? Like, zombies, and once again, zombies as a genre, <clears throat> that was the flavor of the month, right? Like, uh, Was it ever? Yeah. It's, so it's, unfortunately, Cell is just another one of those... Movies in a landscape of disease. So and in, interestingly, I had no idea that it was yeah. zombie movie, a zombie movie. So I I knew like if my preconceived notion was that there was some sort of cell phone glitch or attack sure. in some way that turned everybody like just I thought it just killed them, and mm-hmm. so it was going to be like survival of the fittest stand esque, which we'll get into in a little while. Uh, because there's a lot of parallels. And so I didn't really realize it was a zombie movie until I was watching it. And I don't know. I didn't see it when it came out. I didn't see it because it... But you read it when it came out. I did read it in 2006. So it it was in my wheelhouse, right? But how long did it take you between book and movie? Um, So it came out in 2000... Or 
the the movie comes out in 2016, so almost ten years later. So you that was the gap for you. So you read the book in 2006. Yeah, that was the last time I read. Oh. It. I read it the first time. Okay. okay. And as I will discuss later. Yeah. So you know, I only read read it when it came out in, in the book form, and then you know it was always talked about. Oh, cells going to be coming out. It's John Cusack. You know. It's so on and so forth. Like, and I was like, "Oh, this is the movie that got me back into Stephen King, or this is the book, the this story. story that got me back into Stephen King." I'm super. I want to see how they put it to film. Mm-hmm. And um, as as I mentioned in the intro, it was such a back and forth with this film being made that it it came out so quietly. It came out streaming, right? It, they say direct to DVD, but now it wasn't even theatrical. No, this was this was well supposedly there's <clears throat> there's like that three hundred screens limited, oh, okay, barely anywhere. But it was Part mostly for the John Cusack course these days. Well, I I consider this in that that same line vein of we talked about this previously like geezer teasers when <laughs> certain almost action stars or certain stars that people uh, perceive like this was in my childhood or this was. When films were great, um, I saw it in that same sort of genre, that geezer teaser, and so I was like, "Well, it, it got a limited run and it direct to DVD. How good is this movie going to be?" Mm-hmm. And um, as we'll discuss later in acting, as we all, all said, John Cusack's run of film hasn't really been stellar. <laughs> no, <laughs> and I didn't even know that Sam Jackson was in it. Right. Um, until we like literally a week ago. No. Three days ago, when I watched it, yeah, oh, that's crazy. Because I had I knew that he was in it because it was their reunion from fourteen oh eight. Sure. Whatever well, fourteen oh eight, uh, peek behind the curtain. You and I watched that not that long ago, Randy. Yeah. And uh, it does not, not hold up. Not good. Not good. I mean, I didn't like it then, but it sure is. Right. 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 And, 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 we thought enough time had gone by. Well, we'll give it another shot. Nope. No. But and uh, it's the worst part is they you exactly you hit the nose on the head. Fun fact with Uncle Do they they do so many fourteen oh eight. Callbacks? Do they really in in the damn movie? That I didn't it's, pay attention. It's to that. too much. Like I don't think I a, caught those. a lot of it is in the um, the airport, okay. right? So when Cusack's after he's done with the cell phone, you overhear um, flight fourteen oh eight to certain. And it's oh, like, oh, you dirty sons of I bitches! I did hear that. I did hear that. And too. so yeah. when Cusack's in the hotel room. The picture behind him is a sailboat on the seat. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fourteen oh eight as well. Really, I I never even noticed that. That's, yeah, I love shit like that. And For those two things, I guess I did catch him, but it just didn't stand out. I no, guess. no, and it, it's that whole thing. But I did know that that Sammy J was in this, and it actually was a reason it made me want to see it more. You know? Okay. Because if it, there's been a few. I mean, I think the last one that I gave a fair shot for, as far as John Cusack movies go was War Inc. and War Inc. did not hold up for me. So ever you, since Yeah, then, so I I actually enjoyed War Inc. I I liked it, but it wasn't what I wanted it to be, I guess. And so I was kind of like you, you know, you know, once you get kind of turned off by something, it's like, I'm gonna give it a break. And then he did the Raven mm-hmm, and, and was, whatever. So with Cell, for me, you know, Sammy Sam you know, Samuel L. Jackson was more of a reason for me to watch it than John so Cusack. I which actually, me to say I actually think War Inc. is, is to me, the the start of his meteoric, like, roller, roller, <laughs> roller coaster of, of just mm-hmm. awful. Because yeah. he puts out um, Hot Tub Time Machine, and, you know, that's fantastic. But then he puts out, you know, Love and Mercy or uh, Which was Adult good. World. I like Love and Mercy. I like Love and Mercy. Or 2012. Rachel, my wife, oh absolutely my loves 2012. But I... Ugh. It's... That's Roland, Emmer, Roland, yeah. yeah, Roland Emmerich throws a disaster together, and she's the first one in line. Yep. Uh, but it's <clears throat> god awful. I was gonna say we we try to break these down a little bit by by subcategory, like looking at it through the lens of the Oscars. We usually kind of start with some of the the more technical awards, uh, which can range from score to special effects to you know editing or cinematography or whatever. So I don't know if there's something that blew your skirt up. Do you guys, anything? I didn't well, make a single note about music, which uh, makes me really sad. Uh, nothing stood out to me on the music front. Well, it, it, it was all schlocky, right? They used that stupid yeah. tra-la-la meme song. 
as the, <laughs> as the stupid as the stupid hub song. Like they open up their mouths and then tra la 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 la. Are we gonna get a copyright strike? No, we're not. We're not. Oh, okay. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not the, there yet. The music was very uninspiring. Um, I did notice even from the opening credits, though. Like one of the things that really pissed me off. I'm talking ten seconds into the movie is their choice of design on the opening credits. Yeah. yeah. So it took me out. Like so I didn't like it either. If you watch the opening credits of this movie, there's those black bars right. that cover a portion of the screen. And it just it, it's annoying as it fuck. It separates everything. Like, and they don't do it in a they don't do it in a clever way like other films have done with correct. their Correct. With you know, like there's um Inside Job? Fucking inside job. Zombie land. Right. land. Right. All like, of these are great choices. Where they cover up a part of the screen, but they don't cover up faces or people talking or right. action. Right. And this was like, wait, like you literally are like moving your head to try to look around it. And I can't believe I, I forgot that. I, I, I that was the first thing I was like, this is I was, this is already I was, not good. Right. I uh, I'm fucking thirty seconds into the movie going, wait. Is, did we get like a bad copy of the movie? Is something yeah. wrong? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it was off putting. No, yeah. and I watched it on streaming. So I, I whatever, whatever platform it was streaming on, I watched it there. And I do I remember thinking that it was an ad that was popping up. Yeah, I'm like that's weird. Yeah, but no, it's just it's the credits. Just bad. I and I don't know who to blame that on. I don't know if that's a director call or a producer <clears throat> call or. I feel like it's beyond the director though. Maybe I don't know. He has well, final say. So. Right. Um, well, which we can get into directing later, but I don't know. It just it really was off putting to me. Not too much there either. But uh, yeah. well, I I have a I have a little I, I do a little zing towards you get, you get towards shit on it a little bit. Oh, how, how so, about oh, go ahead. Well, no, I want to say you know just getting into it post credits. I know we were talking uh, some of the technical stuff, um, but for setup, I just wanted to talk about how really well set up I think it was. Um, I think they did a really great job after the credits of introducing what kind of movie it was. I mean, it, they, they basically got to it right away. Yes. When he gets to the payphone. Sure. Um, Which, by the way, I have a note um, about payphones. I don't know, <clears throat> when did the payphone bank really, like, leave? And, like, they must have shot this movie right at the end of the window where mm-hmm. this this movie, the story is possible. Right. Because airports don't have payphone banks anymore where somebody could possibly be to avoid... A cell phone situation. Right, so they shot it in 2013. And, and that's they, like when they were pulling payphones out of everything. Mm-hmm. Right, and then they, they pretty much fit, yeah, so... But it, it was written limbo. back in 05 or... 09. 09 is when... Uh, when so this is, this is King screenplay. Right, I was going to say, Stephen King wrote the screenplay. Which I that that's going to come later for the writing, but and well, that might have been enough to where they say, "Hey, this calls for payphones, so let's yeah. put two payphones on the wall, and Johnny C sure. can use those." But I, it was believable to me. I agree, but for that yeah. that time frame, and and if anywhere, uh, why not a an airport for a t- payphone bank? Because the the whole fact of you can't use your cell phone on a on a flight, or it's not. And if you've used your cell phone the entire flight in airplane mode, right. did it or did it not die? You know, he right. was trying to recharge the. I, I did think that it was a good a good premise, mm-hmm. and and I actually have a note similar to your your note here about how quickly they got to the genre, like yeah. it 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 only takes ten minutes before you know, like oh shit. It's hit the fan. Oh my god! It was well. Okay, it was fi- no. It was before fifteen minutes. Like the 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 self harm, the fucking TSA guy eating a dog. Oh yeah, that like, was great. The girl was, banging her head against yeah, the wall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the plane crash outside the window. The cops but, shooting. Yeah, just, and then getting right. taken out. Yeah. Like as a, as a person who went in blind to the movie. Sure. I was like. Holy shit! This is great. Mm-hmm. I loved the first twenty minutes of this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, w- it was really great. Up, I mean, we'll talk about yeah, more as we go yeah. go on. But um, up until they got to John Cusack's apartment, and then uh, the uh, Isabel Furman character, you know, she walks in, and you know, still, still into it. So this is really good. But then after that is is where. Mm-hmm. So I thought they did a great job of the setup. I I liked the cinematography. I thought they did a good job of that. Um, but from a technical standpoint, yeah, there's really I no think they, to speak. A of. lot of the practical effects were really well done. Yeah. Um, and 
when if we talk about, I don't know if we're going to talk about the movie in chronological order or not, but um, probably not. But I thought some of the digital effects, like for example, the burning of the bodies mm-hmm. in the you know open field or whatever it was, the the arena. Yeah. I thought that looked really shitty. Well, you see that yeah. just cheesy orange glow uh-huh. instead yeah. of a real fire. It's right. Like, yeah. that, you know. And like that compared to some of the other, so, I, you know that that scene happened, and I was like, "Ooh, this looks like a sci-fi made for sci-fi like USA Network." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, "This is Sharknado." Like, <laughs> dude, I love Sharknado <laughs> because it was bad on purpose. Right. Like they knew they were going to be bad. Right. And they said. We're going to be well, so bad. We're unfortunately, good. I think with with the amount of turmoil that it took to get this going, um, that it was probably a rush job. Anyways, you know, you you call up a couple of animation experts out of South Korea, and this is what you get. <laughs> oh, to your point, Randy, about um, the I guess the the pacing of the first few minutes or fifteen minutes or so of the movie, mm-hmm. when they come out of the tunnel and they're like. They, you know, he's met Sam Jackson, and they're on the street now. I actually thought to myself, this is really great because the characters in the movie have no idea what's going on, and I don't either. And let's go on a journey together. Yeah. Like that's like the number yeah. one rule for mm-hmm. me. I fucking hate dramatic irony yeah. where the audience knows what's going on and we're waiting for the characters to catch up. I hate it yeah. so bad. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they were like, shit, I don't know what to do. We don't know what's happening. We don't know where to go. Let's just band together. Yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's band together. All right, I'm in. Like, tell me a story. Yeah. I don't know what's happening, but tell me a story. It was really well done. Yeah. And so, yeah, loved, loved that aspect of it. Um, so before we get on, uh, out of the, before we get out of the... Uh, Technicals? Not the technicals, but out of the uh, the airport. Oh, uh, oh! Another fun fact with Uncle Do. Oh, we need a, we need a theme for that. Uh, <laughs> gate A six. <clears throat> um, so they call out, "Please come to Gate A six. Gate A six. A six is the strain in the stand that is Captain Trips." Oh, oh sure. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense because this movie really did rip off the stand quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I thought it was. Although King, you know, in general has a has a tendency to kind of rip himself off mm-hmm. from time well, to time. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, um, that I didn't pick mm-hmm. up on that one. Are we gonna are we gonna roll into writing then? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if writing is a technical aspect, so if, yeah, talk about whatever screenplay issues you have. Uh, so King, as a whole, doesn't have the greatest of track record when it comes to uh, screenwriting. Well, particularly the endings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Pet Cemetery he wrote, and that was a brilliant. Right. So right? he yep. he <clears throat> he is one. If you if you look at his at his you know his writing credits, Maximum Overdrive. Well, story. It's all story by right. Now it's not made for film or screenplay by. It's it's characters from right. or story from. So right. he doesn't really have a direct involvement with it except he gave or maybe he gave some insight into the writers. So Well unless he gets his own screenwriting credit. Yeah. Like this one or like this one, yeah. Like this one. Or Storm of the Century. Which Storm is, of the Century. Is, so so that brought up my <laughs> next point. Stephen King is an episodic writer. Yes. Well he's he is, good at it. He is not a short form hour and a half, an hour and forty five writer. Okay. Right. He wants to sit and talk to you for three hours. Right. Minimum. And so... Which is fine. Bring sure. him out in. Yeah. So I think he'd be a lot more um, successful in this, the writing of this film. The long way that, form? If, if this was a longer form situation. But once again, 2016, we couldn't... That wasn't even thought of. Well, right. Sure. We didn't have Castle Rock yet. We didn't have, you know, um, Netflix... Uh, Stranger Things, we didn't have any of that yet. Yeah. And so, you know, at any point in time, would I love to see this revisited? Probably not, but... Possibly. Possibly. If long form. If... if <clears throat> Although, they did long form The Stand, and, and it shit the bed. Yeah. Right. So... And, I mean, just with, with the zombie topic in general, mm-hmm. I mean, they've long formed the shit out of that, so... Well, I so... Can, can, I, can I just say, I... I was a little put off. I thought the zombie thing was a little on the nose. Yep. Like, the whole self... We become zombies of the cell phone. So... Like, yeah. I was like, come on. From really? 2008 until 
present. There have been, um, in mass media, there have been maybe eight or ten stories of that nature that the phones are the ones that are are the ones that are tacking. There's a there's a uh, trade paperback called Mematic, M E M E A T I C, I think. Um, it's all about seeing a meme on your cell phone, and the exact same thing happens. You go crazy, and you start mm. killing oh, the zombie, Lord. whatever. Yeah. Um, so well, I mean, if it's a good story, I'll watch it. <laughs> um, uh, but so one of the unfortunate things here is. And this is where we start to kind of cross over into the book versus uh, film, which we're not taking the book story over. The book story is whatever. But you read the book. I did, we write, did not. read the book. So, so in the book, um, the ending, like King does, is is up for debate. Okay. Right. They yeah. they it's open ended. Like he loves an open end, which I do too. Unfortunately, at the time in two thousand six. The fan base on the Stephen King message board ate him alive. <laughs> Did not like the ending of Cell. What's You're telling over. me that the internet turned on a celebrity? Oh yeah, <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially like this is the problem, right? Um, we we've talked about this in the past. There's there's certain niche um, groups of people that have a tendency. Being a fan, you ruin the thing that you like. Yep. Stephen King fans also in that group. Wrestling fans in particular. Yeah. Uh, oh, God, the wrestling fans. Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah, all yeah, of them. yeah. Harry Potter. They are all opinionated. Yeah, and yeah. they're just awful. So they... <laughs> Sorry, fans. <laughs> if you like it, that's fine. Don't be a shithead about it. You know? Like, um... Like so they, they are you sp- putting Stephen King fans in this in this category? Absolutely. Well, horror <laughs> Stephen King sort of thing as well. Um, there's a lot of gatekeeping within the horror community. Well, you like this sort of horror? Yes, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Well, you like this sort of horror? Uh, I feel like there's gatekeeping in society. Well, yes. right. <laughs> and and so it, it's once again that whole relationship. They're the fans of this. They're going to make it the whole experience a shit ride. Man, almost everything I like has gatekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> like, just thinking about it. It's like fucking like what you want to like, man. Like mm-hmm. you, you don't have to. Like who cares? You didn't like that. That's cool. That's not your. But I can just hear it in my head. That yeah. you, you mentioned Harry Potter, and you, I'm thinking to myself, "Oh, you're Slytherin. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you're not a Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nobody's a Hufflepuff. <laughs> I think my sister is a Hufflepuff. My wife is a Hufflepuff. <laughs> I'm a Ravenclaw. My wife is a. So Hufflepuff. I'm also Ravenclaw. I'm yeah, Slytherin. Yeah, I can see that. I yeah. checked. You're a heel. <laughs> <laughs> so he played paid lip service to the fans of okay. the book, and he changed the ending. Okay, King changed his own ending, and so he changed his own ending, which isn't unheard of, right? Right. Um, you know, <clears throat> the mist, the fog, so on and so forth. Um, he likes the ending of those films slash books a lot better, not books, films yep. or series mm-hmm. better than he did his own correct ending. The mist, in particular, which is fine. That's you know, listen, we're not telling tales out of school here. Half the time, King was whacked up on some some Bolivian marching powder. Well, hold on, that, that was before 1990. Yeah, right. But <laughs> like, so and, and then there's there's also a period of time where he's recovering from accidents. Yes, that and, was and so that was 2002. <laughs> so there's there's a little bit of you have to give him a little bit of grace when he's like, you know, maybe that wasn't a hit for me with the way that ended. You know, right? And, and so. I gave it over, and I like this a little bit better. Um, we'll talk about that later right. in the series. But I think if they went an ambiguous, ambiguous route mm-hmm. with the ending instead of what they did, I think it would have made it not a completely better film, but it well, added to the. It it definitely wasn't close ended. I mean, I guess if we're gonna if we're gonna call a spade a spade, he ripped off body snatchers, right? <laughs> yep. Like completely. Yeah. Pretty much um, completely. <clears throat> even from the noise coming out of the mouth. Right. And and the, the ending is like straight up body snatchers, right? Yeah. All versions of body snatchers. So yep. in the book there's so we're so we're talking about the technical. I personally, after they get out of Q sex apartment, I hate the pacing. Yeah, yeah the pacing bad. is bad. It's That's bad. what I was saying about the beginning, because they get <clears throat> to the apartment, they basically rescue Isabel Furman. Right. And say, hey, you're good here, we got you, and then they leave the apartment, and it basically turns into 28 days later. 
Right. Like, it's a completely different movie from that point on. Well, so, it's funny that you say that, because I have a note... Well, first of all, I wrote that it lost me in the middle. It's aimless. Um, there's no clear objective other than survive. Cusack's objective of let me go home is completely forgotten when they're in, like, right. the bar yeah. Yeah. and all of that. Like, and by the way, the bar turned into From Dust Till Dawn. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. Where all of a sudden everybody heel turns. <laughs> right. And now you gotta fight off the zombies. And you're like, wait, what? I've seen this movie. So, so in the book, right, um, they get to the fact that um, these hives um, that they, they group into start changing. They start changing their brain chemistry. And it's a little bit more problematic. As <clears throat> each night happens, it gets worse and worse from them. And the torture that they, they go through um, every time they sleep gets worse and worse. And That's an interesting development. Yeah, I like and, that better. And so, like, do you know how they had talked about the, the raggedy man? Oh, he's attacking me in my sleep. He's in there. There was a lot more to that. There's a lot more psychological play in the book where they build up on that. Like, he is stronger. This is our boogeyman. This is our bad guy. In this, the way, the pacing that it made, who could give a shit about who that raggedy man was that right. entire time? Right. Like, I had a very hard time caring about their relationships as a whole because there was nothing built between them. Hmm. And then... that Oh, whole, I had... Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. That whole Stacy Keach scene, when they kill off that pod, or mm -hmm. that, that cell, it is then there's a, a length of time... Like I said, this is why it would work better in a long-form medium. It, over time, it means more if you're a pod killer than you are... Like, they made it a little bit more... You're a pod killer, there's a lot more at stake as opposed to just trying to... to you're in more danger then? Right. Okay. Like, you, like the, the pods drive everybody else who are not a part of the pods insane enough where those people don't want to help you because you yeah. are branded a pod killer. It attracts more attention. Right. right. Yeah. And well, so, uh, more about the pacing, though, along that line. Yeah. By the time they get in, like, three quarters of the way to the movie, they meet the Ray and Denise character in the woods, mm -hmm. right? Um, at the campground or yeah. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. At that point, I still don't know what the rules are yeah. of these zombies. Right. Like, I don't understand their right. nature. I don't understand what they want. Did I fall asleep at some point? Did I miss something? They use <clears throat> they use that Stacy Keach scene to kind of imply, oh, they're they're like bees, so on right. and so forth. Right, right, right. But, but they, I don't. They right. took more time in the book to set that up for you, so that it was more apparent. Instead of lore dump. Oh, by the way, let's go kill everybody. I even wrote at the end, besides the body right. snatcher ending. That I don't know the motivation or the end game of these people at all, right. like these zombies. So, yeah. and which I guess is fine, but well, I and you had mentioned it about you know they they get out into the world and you're <clears throat> you're on the journey with them. Yeah, in a way that that kind of plays right right there because you, we st we they don't know we don't know. I guess yeah, you know, right. we're learning so, from Stacy Keach. You hear from Samuel L. at some point in time, and it's a throwaway, uh -huh. because it's in the bar, because you could give two shits what's going on in the bar. Exactly, okay. yes. <clears throat> we hear in Kashwak, which is from Bag of Bones, oh, okay. it's yeah. a free zone where cell phones aren't happening. Free zone being a callback to the stand. Again. Right. Yeah. And so, the whole thing, from the very beginning of the movie, was to get to this free zone. It used the last two thirds of the movie to set that up. Like in the book, it was like we're getting to Cashwalk. That's a free zone. I'm seeing glimpses of my son near Cashwalk. Maybe I can find him there. Ah. That makes so much more sense. Yep. Right. And oh, that's probably why I didn't understand. Yeah. So it really did turn into Twenty Eight Days Later. Which Absolutely. You brought up From Dust Till Dawn. I brought up Twenty Eight Days Later. I like both of those movies better than I like Cell. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, <clears throat> So, I don't love was, 28 Days Later, but I liked it more than Cell. Yeah, and it, it, yeah. it just kind of ripped off some better parts. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let's get into some acting, because mm -hmm. we've ripped the shit about apart, but there are some good things about the actors and the people that are in this movie. Um, so from I, an acting <clears throat> perspective, Johnny C., John Cusack, at the airport, I thought as he's finding this out and he's watching these people go absolutely fucking insane, yeah. I thought he played so well to that. 
it Agreed. was like you know I you know that's exactly how any one of us re- would react to that type of a situation. Well, again, the first twenty minutes of this movie are the best twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, Johnny C is great. Um, we were we were joking off air before we started hit recording about how much we all love high fidelity, <laughs> and you know we said top five. Top five Johnny Cusack movies. Right. This one's not it. Right. Because <laughs> um, we all love High Fidelity and we all have top five lists. And right. That is basically our lives in general is us talking about top fives. Um, I do have a problem with Cusack, though. Um, just in general, I feel like he always plays <clears throat> this quiet, brooding, contemplative... Martian child? Cautious. <laughs> like, mm. you know what I mean? Like all of these adjectives that are yeah. just kind of blah. Like he's I always brooding and cautious and uh, I don't know. Uh, well, it's, uh, I, hey, can we hire John Cusack? John Cusack says, "Hey, can I be myself?" Then yeah, I, right. That's pretty and much what you. Are mean. we shooting in Chicago? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay, I'll be there. Right. So we started off with John Cusack the actor, mm-hmm. and then we ended with John Cusack the person. Yeah. And that drives me nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Um, I can see the switch in, right, like, in the movie, like we had discussed previously. Like this, this was a paycheck for him, right? Yeah. There was. He was so Cusack has a long standing history of of really liking to work on projects that have to do with his heroes, and he's a big writer guy. And so, like, he was meeting with Stephen King from the very get go. Um, when he was attached, it was like, boom, they're in it to win it together. And so, <clears throat> in an interview in 2015, um, somebody was like, "Sell," and he's like. I couldn't tell you what's going on with that. <laughs> he goes, me and King are out of the loop now, and we we couldn't tell you. Yeah. We couldn't tell you what if it's finished or what it looks like or what it... We're out of the loop. And and so it was one of those situations where it's like, he's just in it for that pay or that chance to be like Stephen King's buddy now. Which company distributed this movie? Oh, you my know? God. I'm gonna it's... <clears throat> um, Arc, Arc, it's it's a weird foreign name because it is an Italian or a Spanish company. Uh, the only things they and they failed to release in 2013 was a Wizard of Oz sort of rehash okay. that also went direct to DVD. Okay, um, and I love the Wizard of Oz. They so they only them. released three movies, and it essentially those first two that they released bankrupt them, and so they had to find distribution rights. Uh, Immediately, like they took the film to cans. There was no bidding war whatsoever for this movie. If anybody could be surprised by that, no. And no. it just went into like distribution hell. But it's it's an awful like Spanish name. Oh, yeah. Mm. That th- they're done for. They have never released a film since. That's shitty. Damn it, well, Cell. Sorry, Cell. Yeah. So, well, speaking of Cusack, the movie takes place over the course of like a week, right? How is it that at the end of the movie, he's still completely clean-shaven? <laughs> like, this is the shit I know. So, has and anybody ever seen John Cusack with a beard? No. Has he ever done a beard? Maybe, no. maybe he can't grow a beard. Maybe he's just a, per- a perennial baby face. Sort of like you, yeah. Can't, well, can't no, no, a... I will grow a beard. I do shave every day. It's just spotty. It's... <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> um, so, Sam Jackson is clearly, like, the star of this show. Uh, he, I like I, Keach. I'm a I'm a mark for Keach too. I do like Stacey Keach, but he also you know he's kind of because I wrote I made a note about Cusack and Keach, and I put that there's nothing really new to mm-hmm. for either one of them. No. Keach is playing Keach, Cusack's playing Cusack, well, but they're always good. Sam Jackson playing Sam Jackson, but I made a note about that too. Yes, please, because I really, I want to know when it was. I wanted it was probably post Shaft that Samuel L. Jackson he just sort of adopted that wise, no BS, street savvy character that he he's always kind of thinking Was it judging. Star Wars? I don't think well, so. Like he broke he broke the wheel the will of, of George fucking Lucas and so He didn't really have depth there either. But uh, so like ever since then he's like I broke George well, Lucas. Well it had to have been sometime in the mid nineties because Well I was thinking <clears> by Jackie Brown it, he was not quite that character yet. No but by by uh the shark movie, he was. <laughs> right. Which was the next year. <laughs> so, he, he no, was, it was June of July of 19. I'm, like, I'm, I'm thinking of like Die Hard with a Vengeance, and I'm going, no, he wasn't quite there yet. He was still like. That was 95. Yeah, he was still like 
meets Ben Affleck, and they, they what is that, uh, Changing Lanes? Yeah, but that was like 0102. Right, but he, he, but he, he was, like, it was that callback to that, that character. He wasn't very Samuel L. Jackson. Changing Lanes was pretty good, I think. I liked it. <clears throat> but yeah. he's always been that, you know, hey, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. he's always been that guy, but mm-hmm. he kind of adopted that, that wise old man, yeah. uh, street savvy guy. And Which he plays to perfection. Here. Was it Black Snake Moan? Was oh, that Black it? Snake Moan? <laughs> <laughs> that was a different kind of wise and Ooh, savvy. Yeah, yeah. That had my girl in it with her titties out. <laughs> That's a great movie. It is a great movie. Um, but yeah, so he's, he changes it up every now and again. But he played pretty much every character that Sam Jackson has played in the last 20 years. Well, so, you know, his his main thing right now is he's he's in the Marvel Universe, right? Boo! Uh-huh. Which Nick Fury, same guy. <clears throat> well, so... Essentially, the reason why he's Nick Fury is um, he was written as the Nick Fury mm-hmm. in a, a spin-off universe, and they're like, Samuel L. Jackson is the perfect Nick Fury, and he's no bullshit. And they're like, well, we put him in our comic books, so we kind of have to cast him because that's perfect <laughs> fucking casting. You know? Still uh, going. <laughs> Still going. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, I, w- I was actually very impressed with Owen Teague um, as a young adult who is now a king favorite. It threw yeah. me, it threw me off because I I did not remember that was Owen Teague. Right, who's now been in, in at least three yeah. king adaptations. Mm-hmm. I didn't, yeah, I didn't remember that either. Yeah, um, obviously he was well, not obviously, but he played Patrick Hoxtetter in the in the latest It, which was a very minor role. But then he played Harold in yep. The Stand, mm-hmm. yeah. which um, is like a top. Three role in that movie. Um, His Harold is by far the one of the better out of out of, of the two <laughs> out of that the the role, of the out two. of that stand. Like, you oh, know. you mean in the in the miniseries? Right, he is a saving grace in that miniseries. And you know, I didn't think. Not that we want to go down this rabbit hole, but ah. the stand is my favorite book of all time, and I did not think that he was kind of. Frumpy enough at the beginning, okay. Like to make the transformation. You like ninety two Harold Lauder? Well, I think that was a better. Like in the book, he goes from like this, like awful chubby loser yeah. to being like a hot guy, but a yeah. heel. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, like Owen Teague is the later Harold. Yeah, but I didn't buy him as early Harold. Sure, <laughs> I'm ashamed. I didn't see the new stand. <clears throat> Ugh, I oh wow! See it yet. I All right, well, I'm, new I'm episode sad. of To the Table. I know, we do that, <laughs> we'll do long form Stephen King next. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. He had. Uh, by the way, there's there's a quote that I wrote down because I fucking loved it, and I think some of the King elements really came out. It was when they were sleeping in the wherever, and um, it was before the bar, so it was like the, the first or second night, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> Cusack wakes up from his bad dream, and Owen Teague's character says. I thought when you grow up, the nightmares go away. Yeah. And Cusack says, no, they grow up too. Yeah. And I thought yeah, that was line. the most Stephen King quote yeah. of all uh-huh. time. And I don't even know if that was in the book, but if not, it doesn't no, matter not. because, like... It's not in the book? No. <clears throat> wow, that's some smart like writing right King, there. King, that's a King thing. Right. Um, the other King thing that really got me were the fucking magnets on the fridge uh-huh. when he goes home and he's, and the kid wrote... Yep. Much like Harold Lauder does in the stand. Yep. Um, but I Back digress. To that fucking well. I digress. <laughs> I see. Um, <laughs> he ripped himself off a lot. Well, he did. I mean, he did, but it was so well done. The way that the universe works with Stephen King is like each thing is brought back and everything, and everything is sort of interconnected and and all that other stuff. He and loves so, a callback. Right. He really does. And so really so like we get we get things from the stand in this. And we get things from this and this, from Cell and The Stand in Dark Tower as a whole as well. So so he makes call, but he plays off, and we'll discuss this later on. As well. Absolutely. The only other thing, wait, did you guys have anything? I'm going to keep going. No, no, uh, no that's the it. The only other thing that I had was I really did not understand the whole concept behind Cusack's um, like, comic book character being... Involved or responsible was not, or was not a part of the the original book. Because I like, was going to ask that. What yeah. if, what if Cusack was on his phone and died? Like, I think I think what it was. How would they explain that? I think what it was <clears throat> was something to to explain who the Raggedy Man is without explaining the Raggedy Man completely. They were like, okay, this is let's just, make a cinematic. Let's um, let's just say nod to yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so that we it. can establish him as the bad guy. But it was a to bad choice. Yeah, right, because it didn't make any sense. No, it was a mess. No, and so 
Yeah, for that reason, mm-hmm. it, it dropped my score a couple points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, just uh, right up until that last minute. I think from the minute that they, they go out, you know, from Cusack's apartment, it's just loss of point, loss of point, oh, loss yeah. of point. Oh, yeah. And it just every you know, by every fifteen takes, minutes it just, just drops a oh this w- would have been a seven point oh but oh no now you're six point five like right it's it's like uh, when you watch the gymnastics mm-hmm. and every time they turn a toe it's like oh quarter point quarter yep. point yep <laughs> that was and I, I was eager to go into this one because like I said I mean I'm a Sammy J guy and Johnny C and I was looking forward to it and I, I swear to God it's like it, he he gets a dartboard and he goes. This one's gonna hit the bullseye. Holy shit! I hit the cat. <laughs> like, <laughs> and when it comes to scripts coming to Johnny C, that's that's what this one was a bullseye. Fuck! Oh my god! I just broke that. That one, that one went backwards. Yeah, like, uh-huh. I get it. Depends get it. on uh, the day that he's holding the bottle. Yeah, the seriously. Like, sure. like it's bad. All right, dude. You were the one that that saw this before. Uh huh. You read the book. Yeah. You brought it to us. You said, "Hey, have you seen this?" We both said, "No, we didn't read it. We didn't see it." You got to see it, or at least you got to see it for this purpose. Um, <clears throat> well, I I hope that in our conversation it could pique your interest into actually reading the book. Okay. In I want. I, I may actually. Yeah, I own it also so, because, because it's bad. It. Like I watched it and I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> ooh, <laughs> they may bah, probably won't like it as much as I do not like it." <laughs> um, but you did like it when you first saw it. Uh, to a point. Okay. To a point. I I've, I've always been fifty fifty on it. This watch, I went below fifty fifty. All right. So if you had to give it a score out of ten, what do you say? Uh, we're going all the way to the end now. Well, uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else to talk about? Uh, yeah, directing. Oh. Poor Todd Williams. Uh, he's the director who you uh, you post up on your projects when you when you have to clean. You know, we're gonna we're gonna sit you on a messy, terrible, fucking just run of. Oh, hey, we made this a universe. You're you're now a part of it. Here, clean mm-hmm. up this mess because the guy who originally made that movie doesn't want anything a part of it. Because he yeah, did Paranormal yeah, Activity two and three. Okay. Well, I mean, and those are both okay. Those are both decent movies in their own right. They're okay. Clever enough. They aren't the first one. <laughs> no, well, nothing but, is right. Nothing ever is the first one. Now, Godfather two. <laughs> the the <laughs> one, the, the one that's always fucking. But I will say, I did really like and appreciate <clears throat> both Paranormal two and three. Hmm. No, I mean, not for you, huh? Hmm. No. All right. Um, he's just, he, he lacks, he, he lacks really any sort of, like, he, he cleans up everybody else's, like, we don't want to do this anymore. And that's a shit job to have. Yeah. Because you could have some really great ideas or a good vision, and, you know, you're screwed from the uh, get-go. Right, unless you're the guy that comes in to finish Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz in the same <laughs> year, <laughs> yeah. Victor Fleming, and you win an Oscar. <laughs> That guy walked onto both sets, by the way. Fleming. Uh, yeah, so I'm. That's about it, like for me. Um, that's all my notes. I four. This is a four. You're, that's a you're four. Ranking ranking it. It. Four out of ten. Yeah. Four out of ten. It was like pre this watch because I probably forgot about it, half the terribleness to it. Uh, because like we have a tendency to just remember the good things. I think. Yes. I, in general, I think, I, think yeah, I, general enjoyed, public, sure. I enjoyed the. The arena scene a lot more at my first watch than I did because I was like, "Holy fuck, this is a little bit different for me." Yeah. Like, never has anybody <clears throat> cinematically went, "I'm gonna just mow down a field." That was really cool. Fucking like the concept was cool. People mm-hmm. and I was like, "Okay, this is great." Mind you, in the back of my head, you know, I might have been drinking when I was watching. Maybe uh, back you of might my be head drinking right now. That, that, well, <laughs> and and this will be refreshing. <laughs> uh, but like. I, back of my mind, like out of sight, out of out of whatever, like the fire, like the I completely bad, forgot about bad it. Fire. Like, but once again, it completely. I was like, oh, oh, I don't remember the the intro being this fucking off putting. Twenty seconds into there was the film. better fire in 1984's Firestarter. Why? Right, because it was practical. In, <laughs> practical, <laughs> practical fire. Yeah, that's one of the things you don't want to do in post. It's <laughs> fire. Um, so, yeah, this is a 4. At, at the time, it was a 6.5 because there was a little bit of nostalgia with you it. You remember your score. You, you, well, yeah. I think prior to watching sure. it. Yeah, and, and this one is a 4. When we talked about it going in, you know, pre-production, mm-hmm. I, you were 
fairly okay on it. I was, yeah. I was like, I mean, it is going to be what it is, which you guys watch it, but like, like I said at the beginning, I was hoping that it piqued your interest enough that you were like, maybe I'll give Cell a read over. Right, sure. I want to see how different it was. I'd like to see, yeah. I'll yeah. read it. Well, for me, it started off like, you know, we were saying, you know, the gymnastics score, everyone starts with a 10. Yeah. And then how many ticks, you know, do you, do you right. rip off? And I thought even 20 minutes in, I was really enjoying it. I was really having a good time. And then just shit kept happening that didn't make sense to me. Yeah. Despite there being some great elements, the, the story just didn't live up to me. Interestingly enough, I also went with four. Okay. And so we are in agreement. Holy and shit. Stop the fucking presses. That, that's, yeah, that's very crazy. rare for you and I, yeah. in particular. Taking a snapshot of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Hey, Kirk, mark it on the calendar. So there were some really good elements in the beginning. You know, So we'll say the first act of this movie was really, really good. Really Agreed. well done. Um, and then stuff throughout you know, was okay. I didn't hate every minute of it. Um, I gave it a five. Okay. And that was lower for me. I actually scribbled it out. I had originally given it a six, but then I thought about, yeah, halfway through and just how shitty it really got. <laughs> yeah. It knocked it down a whole full point. I actually dropped a half. I wrote four and a half originally, and then I changed it down a half point. So and I'm surprised that I'm higher than that, for higher than a four for you guys. But uh, That's yeah. interesting to me. But I think <clears> the, the, the whole of its parts... Um, and the just the, the aimlessness of it all yeah. is is what put it at that. Focus. On the whole, though, it's okay. I thought, right, it's okay. I, I thought it was okay. We if, always if it's on TBS or whatever AMC, <laughs> it's going to be on the TV, whatever. But am I going to go revisit this again? Probably not. On TNT, in between Bird on a Wire, right? Uh, so, but <laughs> I was going to that's your go. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was going to say, like we always go back to if we we'll watch it again, and I would probably start this movie again. And you know if it's streaming on Prime and or then Netflix, fall asleep. and then stop a third of the way through Fuck because I'm doing a comic book. Totally like. Like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, ten years from now, I'm going to be like, wait, that movie was okay. Let me watch that again. And then I go, oh wait, no, no, absolutely not. A great start. Twenty seconds in. Oh no, no, I hated this. Right, because of the fucking opening credits, <laughs> right. which goes back to the old adage of you know anybody can write a first act. That's correct. That's right. Anybody. This is a prime example. And, and, and Stephen King can write a first act. <laughs> Damn it, well, like I said, it's, it's Sorry, a long form. He's a long form sort of person. I, I have this, this belief. If you have a sort of universe, right? You have a shared universe, and you have a lot of bits and pieces that all come together, and it is a, it's a longer situation. We put it in two movies, right? Yeah. Because there was just so much with that. It needed to be long form. Um, nowadays, instead of putting out a three-hour epic, there's nothing mm. wrong with putting out a special event. Right. Well, okay. I just three looked. or four-part series. I just looked. This book, the novel, is 350 pages long. That's not that long. That's a short one. That's a short Stephen King. Right. Yeah. And I think so, I read it in two mm. days, if that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you have no life. I go hard when I get into a book. <laughs> and you go hard with a lot of things. Yeah. Like, fairy tale, I read it in four days. Wow. Yeah. See, I'm a firm believer in that you don't need to go, you know, long form with everything. You know, there, there's a lot of documentaries that they do. This is the age of documentaries now. Yeah. And everything has to be long form. Everything mm. has to be eight episodes, one hour long each. Oh, my God. Is there enough content to fill it? Whether there is or not, they're going to give it to you. Unfortunately, so, the stand is enough to have 12 episodes. Right. But... There, and they still shit the bed when they made eight. Right. Yeah, so, there are some prime examples well, there, but instead of stretching the cell... So you saw out, the, the new Star Wars, right? I did. Would you think, would you rather watch that Star Wars as, say, uh, The Mandalorian? No. I instead of that three-hour whatever? No. The no? Three hour really? Whatever. Yes. You give okay. them the three-hour whatever almost every time. Okay. <clears throat> because then The Mandalorian, they you know, the eight episode turns into another eight episodes, turns into another eight episodes, and then uh, by the time that, you know... 17th episode comes out, I don't give a shit. The Mandalorian's what got me back into Star Wars. No, so I, I, love, I love The Mandalorian. You <laughs> just use it as an example. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not shitting on The Mandalorian. I also love that. But it's just, you know, everything has has to be, let's extend out, I let's live in this universe. so much the, the last three Star Wars that I was like, I don't know about The Mandalorian. And everybody talked it up, and I was like... Oh, it's great. My boy Johnny Fav, I have to go. And so... 
another Chicago one. If we're if we're bringing it, reining it back into the King universe, like Under the Dome was one that they made into a miniseries, but it's a you know nine hundred pages, thousand pages, yeah. and you're like, oh, this one needs it. And then beyond the first episode, they go, oh, fuck the story. We're just going to make up our own. <laughs> yeah. And you go, wait, what? Castle Rock. <clears throat> you well, know. Castle Rock is different, though. That was intentionally sure. uh, anthological. But Didn't they make Duma Key a, a no, sci-fi they've never, thing? No, they've never really? done Duma Key, and I'm patiently okay. waiting. Yeah, I, like I, I mix Duma Key and Haven up every time. Oh, uh, well, fair. Okay. So, again, we, we like to go average of the three here, and uh, we got oh, yeah. four and a half. Four and a half is the average. Yeah, yeah. four and a half is the average. Of Which is my original score. So, so <clears throat> oh, well, we want to thank you guys uh, for joining us in what is probably our favorite topic in the in the series so far. Yeah. And so keep joining us as, as we are super pumped to put these out for you guys. Drop in our socials, your favorite king, movies, books, anything. Um... <laughs> Just interact, please. Yeah, just yeah. just shoot it out. And also, we do want to hear. I mean, just throw us out some some ideas. I know some themes, of, topics. Some of the listeners actually have already. They've, yeah. they've given us some ideas, which I like. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there's you know a topic or series or something that you'd like us to cover, let us know what it is. Yeah. Um, so check us out on. We're on the Clock app. We're on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere you can get your podcasts. Just hit us up. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for listening, guys.